some time ago, I posted this tutorial on how to create a searchable drop-down list in one single cell. You can watch this tutorial by clicking on the link in the description below. I then received a specific question so many times. How can we get the same functionality in any cell in the worksheet? I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I modify one of the nine functions I created in the previous tutorial. I encourage you to watch that tutorial and then learn how to expand the searching functionality of your data validation anywhere you like in the worksheet. So let's dive in. Here is my start file, which is actually the finished file of the previous tutorial, in which I created a searchable drop-down list in cell A1. It is my start file for this tutorial, and you can download it by clicking on the link below this video. Although I'm not repeating what I already explained in the previous tutorial, that you can watch by clicking on the link here below. But I'm going to wrap up what I previously explained in just few seconds. So in cell A1, I have a drop list. If I click on the down arrow, then these are the values of the drop list along list of names. You can see the list of names in column F. But because it's difficult to select from a huge drop list, then I added a functionality for searching in this drop list and limiting the options available in the drop list based upon the search term we type in cell A1. So if I type JUL, now if I look at the drop list, the list shrink and it shows only options having the JUL keyword. If I change it and I type, let's say MIC, and then I look at the drop list, now the contents of the list change and it shows only the options where I have the keyword MIC. What I did, I created a search function in column E. I'm going to unhide two columns that are hidden right now right click and unhide and i created in this cell a search function the search function looks at what we have in cell a1 so i use the search function to search for this content in column f the search function returns either a number if the keyword is found or a value error i converted them into trues and false by putting the search function in an is number function and because I don't want to return true and false, I want to return a zero or a number, then I put everything in an if function and with a max function, the number increments. When I see a zero, that means the keyword doesn't exist. That means I don't want to see that name in the drop list. But if I scroll a little bit down, when I see a number, that means the keyword exists. And if I go further down, the max function is incrementing and is returning an incremental number in column E. I then use the VLOOKUP function that extracts the records where we have a number. And these are the records in column H that will appear in my drop list. So if I change the keyword and I type JUL, now if I hit enter, the contents of column H change and I'll be using these contents in the drop list, then my drop list reflects what I type in the keyword. How to change the contents of the drop list? I created a defined name using an offset function and a count if function. I assigned the name my list to the defined name and I used it in creating a drop list. The problem is, Everything is revolving around cell A1. My question is, how can I have this functionality in any one of the 17 billion cells in Excel? Before I do it, I want to explain a simple function that will be a game changer in this tutorial. What if I use the function equal cell? What does the cell function do? The cell function is returning information about the work environment. What if I want the address of the cell? So if I hit the tab key, cell, and between bracket in double quotes, address. Then when I hit enter, what does it return? It returns the cell reference of the cell where I type the function. Note that this function is returning the cell reference left aligned, which means 
it has been perceived as text. What if I use this cell reference and instead of hard coding cell A1 in my very first search function, then in this case it will be dynamic. But Excel will not perceive it as a cell reference. So let's see how we are going to stimulate Excel to read the result of the cell function as a cell reference, not as a text. So let's do that. Here is my original function in which I used the search function. I'm going to put it in the edit mode by hitting F2. And what I would like to do is to change A1 with the cell function. So I select A1 and I type cell. And then I hit tab. And then I select address and I close the bracket. But right now when I hit enter, it won't work. The reason for which it doesn't work, because Excel doesn't understand that the result of the cell reference is actually a cell reference. It thinks it's just text. So it doesn't work until I put this function, the cell function, inside an indirect function. If I type before the cell, indirect and then I hit tab, and then after the closing bracket of the cell function, I close the bracket for the indirect function, and then I hit enter. If you get this message box, don't worry about it, hit OK, and then double click and send the function down to the entire range, and now let's test. In the previous tutorial, I created a defined name, my list. If I click on the formulas tab and click on name manager, I see the name, my list. And this name is using an offset function and the count if function, and it stores the result of the VLOOKUP function, which is actually the names meeting the search criteria I typed in cell A1. So let's see how to use my list directly in a cell, and we'll have a little issue that we are going to fix. So let's see how we use my list directly in a cell. I want to create a drop list in this entire range. I'm going to change the color. I want to create a data validation. So I click on the data tab of the ribbon and click on data validation. Alternatively, I can use the shortcut Alt D L and I want to create a list. So I click on the down arrow of allow and then I select a list. I put my blinking cursor in this box and I don't remember the defined name. So I use the helping key F3 and here it says, well, the name is my list. I select it and then I hit OK, and when I hit OK another time, I should have created a drop list that will be dynamic and will be linked to this cell. So let's see if I type J-O-H, now I get an error message when I hit enter. The reason I'm getting this error message, because I have the error alert, which is checked. So I want to uncheck this one. So I hit cancel for now, and then I select the entire range. I hit Alt D L to go to the data validation one more time. And here I move from the settings tab to the error alert tab. I take the check away from this box. And then when I hit okay, now I should be able to type. So if I type J U L and then I hit enter, then the contents of column H change and accordingly the contents of my drop list change as well. Let me test another time. So if I type MIC and then I hit enter, the contents of column H change and accordingly the contents of my drop list change as well. Now we can create a searchable drop down list anywhere we like in the worksheet. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.